Why Halo Infinite's campaign is not exactly open world, yet drawing strong influence from Halo 3 ODST. In this video, we're going to cover everything about it, so stay tuned throughout the whole thing to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again give you another gameplay commentary about some Halo Infinite awesomeness. If you like these kind of videos, make sure to tap that like button, let me know you want to see some more content like this, and it greatly helps out the video and channel. So let's get right into it. Now, I feel like one of the largest misconceptions about Halo Infinite, at least when it comes to the campaign side of things, is that people think it's going to be a straight open world game. And that's not exactly the case. Now, I did bring this up in a previous video, but it's more just kind of reporting on things where this one we're going to be trying to connecting some dots and trying to understand what exactly 343 is trying to accomplish with this campaign for Halo Infinite. This 343 has never said open world. They've said open and expansive world, but never the two together. And that's very deliberate within their language. And drawing from what they've said on Waypoint, what they've said in different interviews as well, we can try to connect the dots and kind of understand exactly where they're kind of going with this campaign and how it's actually going to be playing very similar to Halo 3 ODST. Now in an interview with Destructoid, which is a gaming news website, they talked to Associate Creative Director Paul Crocker about the campaign and they just straight up asked him right here saying, when we asked whether Halo Infinite takes place in a single continuous open world, Crocker said right here saying that the simple answer is that it takes place in a huge world that is open and expansive. So wouldn't the simple answer just be yes if it's open world? Well, that's because it's not exactly. Continuing on saying he elaborates saying we have a storyline that pulls you through it, which is effectively unlocking certain areas. But as you progress through it, you have the ability to backtrack and explore to your heart's content. There is a lot to find out there in the world. Now, head of design Jerry Cook also kind of chimed in saying that as Chief explores the ring, he's going to find more equipment. He's always going to find ways to upgrade that equipment and is not all about power, but it's about options to the player. We want to ensure that players are able to make the choices to be successful in the ways that they want to play the game. Here's from the Halo Infinite blog post that was posted the day of the re gameplay reveal and just kind of started talking about the ring to explore, saying that when you first stepped onto the ring in Combat Evolved all those years ago, I was transported and immersed in a mysterious, awe-inspiring alien world extending to the sky. Continuing on saying that this demo shows up just a small section of the open and expansive world we've crafted to deliver an epic Master Chief experience. Here's another section within that same blog post talking about the Slip Space engine and talking about how they've been able to utilize the power of this new engine to create more content with it. They in here, the exact same phrase again, saying, creating the most visually rich game we've ever made to go with the most open and expansive environment to appear in a Halo game. Now this world is going to be huge. I mean, absolutely massive. On the gaming news website, Shack News, they actually have a little excerpt here talking about saying, according to the team at 343, today's campaign footage was taken roughly halfway into Halo Infinite's story, and it is said to be a significantly bigger world to explore. The word from the 343 team is that Halo Infinite's world will be several times larger than the previous efforts combined. So take the campaigns for Halo 4 and 5 together and it's bigger than that. Now hearing all this, you're probably thinking this is probably just, you know, them trying to harken back to Combat Evolved while being a new game of Halo Infinite, but I read this as a lot of similarities to ODST. They mentioned how they want to recapture that feeling of crashing onto the Halo ring and then exploring it much like you did in Combat Evolved. What other game do you crash land onto a new environment you've never played in before? ODST, very beginning of the game, you're landing into New Mombasa. I mean, obviously you played that level in Halo 2, but you know, you played in a whole new way where it's like brand new experience within ODST. And using the specific wording of open and expansive and never using open world together, makes me think that, you know, this is going to be a game that we're going to start out rather small and then bloom out to something bigger, which sounds very similar to, well, 
ODST. Just like an ODST, when you first crash land onto M New Mombasa, you had this small little area you have to go through, and then you have to link up with the superintendent. You see how the small area is. You progress to the next checkpoint, which gets you to the next area, and then unlocks a new story mission. It seems like it's going to be a little bit different, though, with Halo Infinite. Whereas ODST's campaign, though has a nice open world of Streets of New Mombasa, it still plays rather linearly, as you just play the same missions in the same kind of sequence, but then you can kind of go about how you want to do it in a different way using the the level of new Mombasa streets. It's literally just a singular checkpoint, go to that, progress the story forward. Now it seems like there'd be something similar in a way with Halo Infinite, but I think it's being much more open-ended. As you see within the gameplay demo, when you open up the map, you have all these different objectives that pop up. There's actually a screenshot right here that showcases various things you can do within the game. And there is no singular checkpoint to go to that spot in particular. It just seems pretty open. You can kind of do it however you would like. But I think Halo Infinite might kind of go in a way of complete five missions and then you can progress the story forward. You see, you can kind of progress through the game however you would like, but there's still gonna be main beats you're gonna be having to hit to progress this narrative forward. If you take a look at this individual screenshot from Halo Infinite's map, you can kind of see the different objectives we have. In the lower left, it looks like kind of like a high value target kill kind of thing. I also have these battery turrets, which are, looks like there'd be three of those, which would be a kind of a rule of three when it comes to gaming, when it comes to objectives you need to complete. And there was a whole mess load of different objectives that you can kind of see at the top of the screen as well. And if you look on the left side, there's a thing called Echo Base, which looks kind of like a friendly location. It's blue, it's called a base. Echo Base sounds something very similar that you would hear in a UNSC kind of call sign. And so there might be these kind of home base checkpoints where you can maintain your resources or something along those lines. That's pure speculation, but there'd be some kind of locations you can check out like Echo Base and Golf Base. And discussing on the various equipment that you'll be able to find throughout the world, which was mentioned by Jerry Hook, which makes me think very similar to, well, ODST as well. That was more tied to the audio logs, but if you do certain tasks within the game, you actually unlock certain things like that mongoose within ODST, which is a huge time saver when it comes to just trying to explore the world and kind of capture everything that you can do within the game. But while Halo Infinite's campaign is gonna be feeling like a brand new experience, yet familiar, I think it's gonna be exactly kind of that same feeling, but maybe a little bit more expansive than like what it is for ODST, where it's, ODST is a much more linear style of open world kind of experience, where Halo Infinite is gonna be a much more open-ended style. But let me know in the comment section down below, guys. Do you like this idea of like a sectioned off, starting off point for Halo Infinite's campaign, or do you wanna see just open right off the bat and kind of explore however you'd like? I do read all the comments and try to reply to most of them as well. And with that high level update coming out rather soon from 343 talking about what's going on with Halo Infinite in development and also just their idea of what's going on with the game as a whole, I guarantee you I will be making tons of videos doing deep analysis into that blog update that we will get about Halo Infinite's campaign, development, and everything else in between. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, guys, to keep yourself up to date with Halo. If you're new to the channel or missed any content from me recently, check out the videos on the screen right over here. I got a link to all my news and informational videos if you've been out of the loop for the last few days or so. Thank you so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.